Hand grinders are like a niche within a niche. It takes a very specific type of coffee person to want to manually grind 10, 15, 20 plus grams of coffee, maybe multiple times per day. And to be honest, I'm not that type of coffee person. But because there are so many of these morning masochists, I figured I'd treat y'all to another hand grinder review, and this time we're looking at the King Grinder K3. As you can see, it's a handsome piece of kit. The build feels very solid, it's got a nice weight, and the handle travel is buttery smooth. But what sets the K3 apart is its claim of being able to make small enough adjustments for a proper espresso dial-in and coarse enough for a well-extracted pour-over at a price point just over $100. So in today's video, I'm putting these lofty claims to the test. Hand grinders are relatively simple mechanisms, and generally what sets them apart is their number of clicks and their burr sets. Clicks, in other words, is just the number of stepped adjustments. The K3 boasts 140 clicks over the course of multiple full rotations, each click resulting in a change of 18 microns which for reference, these holes are the size of 250 microns. Yeah, it's pretty small. This all sounds good on paper, but I did find it a bit clunky and awkward to switch between espresso and pour over quickly and accurately, spending what felt like a good amount of time counting clicks. The burrs in the K3, like all hand grinders, are conical, but clock in at a pretty big 48 millimeters, which is nine millimeters larger than the famed Commandante and six millimeters larger than the previously reviewed Chestnut X and also 15 millimeters smaller than my current daily driver, the Niche Zero. They're also titanium coated, which I think is intended to extend the life of the burrs, but from what I've seen and read, make no noticeable difference in the quality of the grind. The workflow is your standard hand grinder program. Remove the handle, then the lid, Add your coffee, replace the lid and handle, and then give it a good crank. Which has a nice smooth travel and a comfortable grip. Plus the larger burrs make the grinding process a little smoother and quicker. The result is a catch cup of ground coffee, which should have no more than 0.01 grams of retained grinds. This kind of goes without saying, but espresso and filter are two very different brew methods, and they can highlight where a grinder excels and where it may fall short. Brewing a pour over using the K3 was a rather uneventful experience, in a good way, with it working just as you'd expect and producing a tasty cup of coffee with a good balance of flavor and a respectable extraction percentage. One thing worth noting though, is the K3's grind consistency tends to decrease when grinding coarser, resulting in some faster brew times, so I'd recommend grinding finer, roughly five or so clicks to offset that issue. Now onto my brew of choice, espresso. On finer settings, the K3 produced a more uniform grind, and when prepped properly, it produces bottomless extractions that any barista would be proud to achieve. In the cup, the espresso had a good balance and a surprising amount of clarity, but I did feel like it fell a bit short in texture, which is one of my favorite things about espresso. In terms of extraction percentages, I found it a little lower than my average pull on the Niche or even on the Chestnut X, but still within a respectable range. And likely with a little more fiddling on the grinder and maybe some other brew variables, I could probably eke out maybe another percent. Clearly, the King Grinder K3 isn't perfect, but what grinder is? And also, considering its mid-range price, it does produce a near-premium performance. When compared to grinders like the Niche that goes for 700 and the Chestnut X that goes for 300, it doesn't go down without a fight. In the end, I feel like what's really holding it back is its grind consistency. Those boulders and fines create enough inconsistency brew to brew to be noticeable. Also, I can't help but be annoyed by the constant counting of clicks and getting lost in the sauce just adjusting between brew methods, but this could just be the fact that I basically use a hand grinder once a year. There's nothing that breaks me out of taking my electric grinder for granted than a few days using a hand grinder. I think for just over $100, the King Grinder K3 is a great option for the enthusiast on a budget, especially if you're looking to produce quality cups on multiple brew methods, and especially when the closest competition is in the $200 to $300 range. Also, just really any coffee lover looking for a reasonable travel grinder. 
And with that, my hand grinder review quota is done for the year and it's still January. So I'm gonna pass the conversation on to you. Hand grinders, how do you feel about them? Love them, hate them? Do you actually own a King Grinder or the same model? I wanna know what your experience has been like. Also drop any other copy questions you may have about hand grinders or really anything else in the comment section down below and I'll see y'all next week. Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spermetheus for content throughout the week, my blog at Spermetheus.com, my coffee at LittleGiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, Pony Boy.